Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. I wanted to do a little video today because I had a, um, a little dream. It wasn't a big dream, it was just a little dream this, um, this last night. And um, it was a, a funny little dream. I didn't think it was a message from the Lord. I really didn't see any, um, I thought it was just one of those passing little funny dreams. And um, <clears throat> the more I thought about it, I realized there was a message there. Uh, so I'm going to uh, start with uh, a reading. There's quite a bit of reading I would like to do to go along with this word. Um, 1 Corinthians 10, starting at verse 1. <clears throat> this is um, a letter from Paul to the Corinthians. And his um, his word was to uh, is a word of encouragement to stay steadfast in the Lord and faithfulness and to to remove all evil and and um, to to persevere in righteousness basically so I'm going to start with first Corinthians 10 starting at verse 1 moreover brethren I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overcome in the wilderness. Now these things were our example, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. <clears throat> neither let us fornicate. Let us not. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted. <clears throat> also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. <clears throat> Excuse me. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, that they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand take heed, lest he fall. There uh, hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye would, that ye are able, but with, uh, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly, dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Okay, now I want to read Zephaniah. So, let me see if I can find it here. <clears throat> Zephaniah, it's in the Old Testament, chapter 3. It's a short little book. Um, but I want to read verses 14 to 20. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgment, judgments, he hath cast out thine enemy. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thy hands be slack. The Lord thy God is in the midst of thee, is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly, who are of thee, to whom the reproach is of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in, the, in every land where they have been put to shame. And at that time I will bring, a, bring again, even in that, the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord." Now, I want to read a couple of verses from Psalms. Um, Psalms, the first one I'm going to read is Psalms 59. Does that one I want to read first? Let's see. Yeah, let me read Psalms 59. I think the whole entire psalm, it's not very long, but interesting. It's an interesting psalm. 
Um, I'm going to start in the beginning, uh, the middle of the first verse. Deliver me, deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgressions, not for my sins, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me, and behold. Thou therefore, O Lord, God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. Salah. They return at evening, they make a noise like a dog, and go round about the city. Behold, they belch out with their words, swords are in their lips, for who say they, so say they doth hear? But thou, O Lord, shall laugh at them. Thou shall have all the heathen in derision. Because of his strength I will wait upon thee, for God is my defense. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. Uh, God shall... Uh, the God of my mercy shall pre prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon my enemies. Slay them not, lest my, pe lest my people forget. Scatter them by thy power, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield, for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips. Let them even be taken in their pride and the cursing, and for cursing and lying which they speak. Consume them in wrath, consume them that they may not be, and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob unto the ends of the earth, Salah. <clears throat> and at evening let them return, and let them make a noise like a dog, and go around about the city. Let them wander up and down for meat, and grudge if they be not satisfied. But I will sing of thy power, yea, I will sing aloud for thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, I will sing, for God is my defense, and God, and the God of my mercy. And I want to read a couple of verses from Psalms 52. <clears throat> it's also very short. This is even shorter than the last one. Um, but this is uh, verse starting from 1, one to 9. Who boastest thou? thyself in mischief, mischief, O mighty man. The, good, the goodness of God endureth continually. Thy tongue devised mis mischief, like a ra sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to, sp than to speak righteousness. Salah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place, and not thee out of the land of, and root thee out of the land of the living, Salah. The righteous shall also see and fear, and shall laugh at him. For lo, this is the man, lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches, and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God for ever and ever. I will praise thee for ever. Because thou hast done it, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. <clears throat> Isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. God is so good. Uh, anyway, this dream was, uh, let me just start with the dream before I tie all this all together. The dream was quite short and it's kind of strange, <laughs> um, but not complicated. It was, um, I was actually, in the dream, I was Queen Elizabeth. Not the present Queen Elizabeth, but the Queen Elizabeth uh, the first. Um, actually, a few weeks ago, I watched a uh, a program. I, I watched the movie with uh, Kate Blanchett, who was playing Elizabeth R. Um, and uh, I, I had to stop and you know really admire this woman, the, the the type of woman this Queen Elizabeth was. She was in a very difficult situation, and and her enemies and those who wanted an alliance were all around her and um, she was a very intelligent woman and uh, she wasn't perfect there is no doubt about it she was not perfect but she had a lot of challenges to face and she did it without the help of a husband or a, a, um, she didn't she never married uh, like I said she was not perfect there is no doubt about it there was no, she was not perfect however 
I had to admire her that she had the fortitude and the strength and the uh, desire to rule her people well, and, and as a result, there were 60 years of relative peace in her land uh, because of her uh, desire to let people worship God in the, the way they desired to worship. Um, but anyway, in this dream, I was Elizabeth R. I was the Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth I in this dream. And in this dream, I was um, in a castle, and I was being pursued in this castle. I was being, uh, just as <laughs> Queen Elizabeth in, uh, was pursued by suitors who wanted to marry her, wanted an alliance, wanted uh, to take her throne, wanted her power, desired her, um, her, her throne, basically, and wanted her crown. Um, they were both good and bad suitors that were trying to uh, take what she felt was hers, and she wanted to hold on to her crown. Kind of reminds me of um, uh, the Church of Philadelphia and how Christ said, you know, don't let anyone take your crown. Um, so the, the church has, has to be in perseverance and re realize that we are under pursuit by the devil. We are under desert, pursuit by our, the evil ones, um, enemies within and enemies without, those who are sheeps and wolf, uh, wolves and sheep's clothing who are in the church who are trying to deceive and steal your crown and those without the church those who are blatant enemies who are trying every way in their can they can to to um steal the, the kingdom um so uh anyway in this dream I, that kind of reminded me because um uh, in this dream i was uh, queen elizabeth and i was being pursued by enemies um those within and those without. Um, I was being pursued by the Spanish, who were always in black in this movie. Um, they were the enemies without. They were ones, the ones that coveted the kingdom and wanted it for their own. And the ones within, which was the, um, uh, Nor Norfolk. Norfolk was um, a peer of the realm, and he wanted, he was a very powerful man, and he wanted Queen Elizabeth's throne for himself. So he, there was this struggle for those within and those without who wanted her kingdom. And in this dream, I was in a castle and I was being pursued by both my, those within enemies within and the enemies without. And as I began this, uh, chase, I was basically being chased by my enemies throughout this castle. And, uh, at first, I was a little fearful, a little so, somewhat feeling like, oh, this is scary kind of thing, you know. But I, in my head, I was thinking to myself, but I know where the secret passages are. <laughs> so I was running throughout the, ca the castle, and I was, you know, there were times when they were, the enemy was really close. But I always knew where the secret passage was, and I knew how to open the door and go through these doors and, and escape. And so as the dream progressed... Uh, I went from a place of being fearful to a place of joy. I was actually laughing in my dream as I realized I, the, my enemy was chasing after me hard on my heels. But I always knew where to go to get out of harm's way. And so I would go through these secret passages and I would find myself running down the hallways. And I was laughing and was laughing as as this was going on. I realized... There was no way for my enemies to catch me because I always knew where the secret passages were <laughs> and they didn't. So that was the dream. It was as simple as that. And I thought to myself when I woke up, I thought, what does this mean? <laughs> Is this a dream from the Lord or was it just, just a strange little dream? And I, when I realized that what the Lord was saying was a message to the church to not fear the new world order, not to fear... Uh, the new world, or the, the beast rising. Yes, the beast is going to rise and he will rule and reign on earth for seven years and have his way and destroy the, you know, the world, but he will be destroyed. And, but the Lord was saying there was always a way for escape for his people. He has always given them a way of escape and they know where they are. They know that, that the word, the word of God, the Bible is our way of escape. It's our, um, a way out of all troubles. He's, the Lord is preparing a bride for himself that's without spot or wrinkle. What does that mean? I was thinking about that this morning, thinking, what does that mean, without spot or wrinkle? Um, that means everything, all the, all the, 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 everything's been ironed out. It's like when you, uh, without a wrinkle, you take the ironing board, it's uh, iron, and then you take a board and you, and you rub, you rub with heat to get all those wrinkles out so it's a nice, smooth fabric. And that's basically what he's doing with the church. 
And it talks about, you know, letting go of idolatry and, and, and letting go of wickedness and fornication, all those things. Those are wrinkles in the, in the, and spots in the, in the fabric. And we have to remove all our idolatry from our spirit. But I think the, the, the word the Lord was trying to tell me was that the church was starting to understand that there's no fear in the Lord, that perfect love casts out fear. And those who trust in the Lord don't have anything to be fearful of because we know where the secret passages are. We can escape Satan's temptations and his trials and Satan's um, uh, uh, deceptions because we've been given the truth and God always provides a way for us to escape. And therefore, the joy becomes starts to, um, as we uh, learn how to overcome our enemy and how to escape the enemy's traps, this joy starts to build. And I think the Lord was saying that this is where the, pl the place of the, the church is. The church was running in fear all these years, for 2,000 years, the, the church has been running in fear from her enemies. But now she's, she's laughing with joy, just like the Lord laughs in derision at his enemies. Those who try to take his throne think that they can't, possibly can. The Lord is just laughing at them, thinking, you, you're fools to think that you can overcome the Lord. The same thing as the church is beginning to find her power and find that she has this power to escape the all the traps and wiles of the devil. Anyway, I thought that was just a, a cool word, an encouragement word from the Lord that this morning I just wanted to share it with you, that we are going to escape. The Lord has found a way for us to escape in every trial and temptation that we are in. And, and even though the new world is rising, even though the beast is rising, the Lord will not allow us the, the, the gates of hell excuse me, the gates of hell to overcome us. The gates of hell shall not overcome the church because the Lord has always provided a way for escape for us. And we have to keep that in mind and not be fearful, but allow the joy of the Lord to be our strength, to allow the Lord to to build us up in truth and, 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 and faith so that we will never be fearful of what the world may be doing because the world is always up to evil and traps and deceptions. But the Lord always shows us how to escape them. And uh, anyway, just a word of encouragement. I, I wanted to bless you all with because I thought it was kind of cool. And the Lord is so good. He always speaks in such unusual and different ways. Uh, little did I ever think that he would use that movie that I watched a few weeks ago um, to give a, a lesson of or a word of encouragement. I just think this is really cool. And, and I hope it blesses you. God bless you. And I'll talk to you later.